Welcome to another video. Today it's about my 3D printing adventures. As you may have seen in a previous mailbag, I got myself one of these dual gear extruders made out of aluminium to upgrade the standard plastic one that my Creality CR10 came with. The original plastic extruder was working fine initially, but as time passed the wear increased and it started slipping on the filament, the spring was not providing enough tension anymore, so it was time for an upgrade. The dual gear extruder was the obvious choice because it's affordable and its dual gear system should ensure better grip of the filament. I'm not 100% sure but I believe the original design was done by Bontech and I most certainly got a cheap clone of that from AliExpress. You would think that for such a simple mechanical device it shouldn't matter if it's a clone or not but as we'll see in a moment it does matter as subtle changes can make it better or worse. I installed my new dual gear extruder, I didn't post any videos about it, I didn't think it was interesting enough and I needed to install it without further delay because I was doing this while I was printing face shields and I needed to have the printer up and running ASAP to get back to printing shields. It was working great, I printed a bunch of face shields, uh, it had very good grip of the filament, but a few days later I accidentally noticed there is a bunch of residue gathered up on the mechanism. Upon closer inspection it seems one of the cog wheels is grinding the aluminium piece that's holding it, so I really need to take this apart and investigate further because I'm afraid it's going to ground itself up until there's nothing left. But before I continue with the disassembly let me present you the sponsor of this video which is jlcpcb.com, a professional PCB manufacturer which currently has an offer of $2 for 5 prototype PCBs, you can pick any solder mask color with no extra cost so do check them out. During this assembly I noticed a lot of that grinded metal residue has gathered below so I decided to take everything apart to clean it. I wouldn't want that stuff getting inside the motor although I suspect it may have already gotten there so I'll see how I can clean that. By taking a closer look at the mechanism we can start to understand what's going on. First I can see there is quite a lot of play in the fitting of this wheel on its uh, vertical axle both vertically and horizontally and depending how it plays on that axle it can actually encounter quite a bit of friction which I would assume caused the trouble during printing. The extruder motor can only push so much on these wheels and it will start to skip steps. I'm sure some of this happened after the grinding started but it must have had that play from the beginning to uh, allow this grinding to happen from the start. After removing the quote marks axle of this wheel we start to notice one possible cause of the problem caused by uh, cost savings from whoever decided this. I said quote marks axle because instead of a smooth axle inside this joint they've used a 3mm threaded screw. Yes they do have these pin bearings inside but they should be resting on a smooth axle rod, not the thread of a 3mm screw. Instead of having a machine custom part that would have threads just on the end where it needs to screw in into the bottom piece, they went for this uh, cheap 3mm screw replacement, which as we can see has already been grinding on the inside and has worn out the thread. And I notice another thing, while the bottom hole is an M3 uh, thread, the top one measures at 3.2 millimeters wide and uh, as we know a, uh, an M3 threaded screw is just 2.9 millimeters wide, so there is about 0.3 millimeters of, uh, of space in there where the screw can move, so that's what was causing that play we noticed in the cogwheel. So that makes me think this was originally designed with a custom machined pin that would go in there and whoever is cloning these went for the cost reduction method of replacing that with a 3mm screw. Now even with a perfectly machined pin that would uh, hold the bearing and the wheel perfectly centered and perpendicular to the mounting plate, I think we would still have some grinding happening here, much less of course but we would still have some because the teeth on these wheels extend all the way down to the bottom surface and so it would be grinding on that. So 
we would still need like a, a small washer in there to provide some space in between the bottom mounting plate and the cog wheel to prevent that grinding action. I don't have access to a lathe machine to be able to manufacture an axle to solve this issue but it would have to be something like this uh, drawing I made. Have a bit of M3 thread on the end just uh, 2.6 millimeters long then have this uh, smooth rod which is uh, long enough to go between the mounting plates through the wheel and support the bearings without any play and this should be about 14.1 uh, millimeters long with 3 millimeters wide and then have this uh, 0.1 millimeter wider shoulder towards the end to fit tighter inside the top mounting hole uh, for our handle because like I mentioned earlier the uh, top mounting hole is a little bit wider so this can be 3.2 or actually even 3.25 millimeters wide and through the magic of editing I have contacted someone with a machining shop locally and he was able to manufacture this special pin according to my drawing and interestingly I found out he's a viewer of the channel so we had a little chat. He told me that if I still have problems I should return and let him grind away some of this uh, bottom surface in the aluminium to be able to fit a steel washer in there sitting at the bottom of the cog wheel which would uh, remove our vertical play and possibly provide a better interface for the uh, steel cog to run on but right now I'm going to assemble this as it is without any washer because uh, the tolerance is too small there isn't enough space to fit a washer in there I have maybe 0 0.1 0 0.15 millimeters in there and I don't have any washer that's that thin to go in there before reassembly I gave everything a thorough cleaning starting with the cog wheels I just used some isopropyl alcohol to clean the residue and the brush and then I cleaned the pin bearings and finally the stepper motor for which I used some compressed air to blow the dust residue that was gathering at the base of the axle right where the bearing of the motor is. While reassembling everything together I used some of this dry PTFE lubricant from WD-40. I put this on the pin bearings and on the shaft itself. I also added just a touch of lubricant to the bottom surface of the cog wheel and I made sure no lubricant got on the part of the wheel which is supposed to grab the filament. My bearings are still in working condition but if yours got damaged it's good to know you can order a replacement set from AliExpress. They're fairly inexpensive for a set of 10 and uh, I'll put a link to these in the description below the video. You generally don't want to use a wet lubricant or grease on these parts because uh, that will gather up dust and the grease will become this uh, thick gunk loaded with other particles. A dry PTFE lubricant is preferred for these uh, kind of applications. So here is the mechanism back together. Seems to be running smoother now. The cog wheel doesn't catch on the aluminium base anymore because it's sitting perpendicular now. The new axle is a tight fit. There is just the tiniest amount of axial play but that could be the tolerance of or the wear on the bearings inside because they've run on that M3 screw for so long. But it certainly doesn't feel like something that is a problem anymore and if I wanted to maybe I could correct that with a new axle that could be let's say 3.1 millimeters wide for the entire length or maybe I could order a new set of bearings. There is however some vertical play left in the system and that's mostly due to the uh, grinding that happened in the bottom mounting surface which increased the tolerance and I could fix that by introducing a washer as I explained earlier but first I want to see if that's really necessary or if it's running just fine as it is. After looking at some YouTube videos particularly ones from Creality which claim uh, it's showing an original Bontec part. It appears to have a very similar part, an M3 screw used in here and although it's not clearly visible, they haven't removed the screw, it might be possible that the problem is present on the genuine units as well or maybe they have some tighter tolerances which would prevent the problem from appearing but in any case running those bearings on an M3 uh, screw thread it's going to wear them out eventually. Now I'll just let my printer run for a while with this mod and see if there is any aluminium dust gathering around the cogwheel like it did previously which would indicate the problem is still present or maybe it's fixed. In any case, I shall do an update video to let you know of the results. So far everything is looking promising and I might just get away without having to put a washer in there. If you found this video useful, you can click the like button 
or let me know in the comments below. You can also support this uh, channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. And if you'd like to check out more 3D printing videos, I have a playlist ready for you. You can view it by clicking on this area of the screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.